Warren Custer, PTA, is the founding director of START, Stroke Active Recovery Therapy, an intensive therapeutic and recovery program for stroke and neuroinjury survivors. Over the last five years, Karen has worked with over 100 survivors of stroke and neurological injuries, helping them to recover their physical and daily activities and to have a fulfilling life. She's created a program that integrates intense physical therapy with social and cognitive skills that has enabled survivors to go from wheelchair bound to skiing or driving cars. Karen has more than 20 years in the fitness and wellness industry. She has served in all aspects from training to rehabilitation. Previously, she was the program director for one of the nation's largest rehabilitation services and stroke daily program for Easter Seals of Colorado. Additionally, she has worked as a physical therapist assistant in outpatient rehab, treating patients with neurological and orthopedic diagnosis, utilizing various manual approaches, providing us real life examples of stroke recovery, Karen Custer. Well, good afternoon. Wow, what a great day and a bunch of information. My head was swimming this morning as I was listening. Um, so as uh, Aaron was saying, yes, I've been in physical fitness and wellness for about 20 years. Um, and from there, I decided I had to do more. I was working with a lot of clients who were coming post uh, rehab, and so I decided to go ahead and further my education in physical therapy, and that's where I ended up working with stroke survivors and creating the program that I did with Easter Seals. So I don't mean to be the Debbie Downer here, but let me talk to you just for just a minute about what it means to have a stroke. So just imagine your life, and suddenly you can't move one side of your body. It stops. What if you can't get out of bed? can't sit up, can't get dressed, can't go to the bathroom. And when you start talking, the words aren't coming out quite right. And then what if you all of a sudden can't do things that you did automatically? And then what if the medical society or the medical community says we can't do anything to reverse this? And then what if the doctors tell you this is as good as you're going to get? Hi, my name is Tony Cherry. I am 58 years old and had my stroke at 54. When I woke up from it, my neurologist asked me to move several of my extremities. When I was unable to, he told me that uh, that was as good as I was going to get. Now, mind you, nothing moved. And now, mind you, also, this is a doctor. And I told him, bullshit, you don't know who I am. And this is not going to, I'm not going to be like this for the rest of my life. So I'm going to introduce a lot of my clients to you today. Um, so my job today is to take all the wonderful sciences out there, all the wonderful information that we have, all the wonderful techniques that we've been given through the science world, and I'm going to show you what they do and what I do with all that beautiful science that we have. I don't understand how it all works up here, but I do know it works out here. So as Tony was saying, that is the life of a stroke survivor and their caregivers. This is what they're left with. So the medical science is telling us that their, their best hope for recovery is within the six, six months to a year. And so insurance kind of drives the, the, the protocol in a way for our clients to get out of the hospital, to go to rehab, to go to home health. And what we teach them, which is very important, we teach them to do ADLs using their unaffected side, forgetting about the side that is affected. And we just kind of teach them to get them in, get them out. And that's really important, but that can't be the end all. You can't stop it there. They have to continue on. So what does recovery look like? Recovery looks like, let's get them moving. Let's get their brain and their body to connect. And then let's get them physically conditioned. So when I was working in therapy, um, one of the things that I began to see was that the, they were doing repetitive motion, boring, nothing to it, and I thought, oh my gosh, if this 
is what it's all about. It's boring for me. It's got to be boring for them. And it was just, it was driving me crazy, and I knew it was driving them crazy. So what I decided to do was take a program that was repetitive and make it so they could actually do recovery activities and do task-driven things with their hands, minds, brains, everything we could do. Um, so when I was working with them, a lot of my clients came to me, and as you know, stroke clients, when they come to you, um, they usually have some sort of what we call spasticity or tone, high tone, which means their bodies don't, they don't have the mobility. So they're, they're, they're tight, their muscles are tight, their joints are tight. So when I watched these guys, and I watched that we weren't allowing them to do what we thought, what I believed that they could do. I believed they could do more. So I believe truly that if we give them the opportunity, if we give them the structure, if we give them the motivation, and if we give them the chance, they will rise to the challenge. So just because these guys don't talk doesn't mean they don't think or understand. Just because they don't move well doesn't mean they can't learn to move. And in my world, because we're hesitant to challenge them, does it mean they won't work hard to rise to the challenge? So this is what I do. This is our studio. This is where they come and they do their work. They're with me from anywhere from five, three to five hours a day. And these are some of my guys. And of course, we do have a lot of fun and we do laugh a lot. I was just talking to Heidi and we were talking about, you know, giving out as a caregiver and as a provider and the energy we put out and do we get the energy back? And I got to tell you, it. We do. We have a great time here. So what we've designed is a program where um, they, we want to get their body moving. We've got to get them moving. So without having good mobility, we can't get them to move. Then we work on connecting the brain. We work on the brain to the body, just like we've heard all day today how important exercise is and the brain and the connection there. And then the last thing we do, we've got to get physically fit because there is research out there that says they have got to work out. We've got to get them cardiovascularly healthy. So again, they, the clients come to us with, with stiff joints because of the, the lack of mobility um, due to contractures or um, stiff joints. So before we can actually get going on the exercise and to get the benefit and have adequate exercise, we've got to get them moving. So my, my physical therapist and I, we um, do joint mobilization, which kind of sounds scary and it's really not. But we're just trying to get those joints to loosen up so we can actually get a range of motion, something that's, that we can get the optimal movement we, got, we need. Because without that, we're not going to get any cardiovascular or any, extra, any exercises. We've also added in soft tissue mobilization, which is, as some of you guys would say, was massage. But we actually get into the tissue and we actually move it around so that we can, again, get that range of motion. And then we are doing passive range of motion to what we call active range of motion. And then we are doing a stretching program because all the muscles need to be stretched so that we can keep the mobility of the joints. So once we get the, the body moving, we got the joints moving, we got some more mobility, better range of motion. So what we found in our research is that there's, we're seeing a lot of improvement and some really good recovery through mental imagery. So we've been starting to practice with a lot of this, and we just started doing this about eight months ago. And we're seeing some really interesting, fun things happening. So one of the things we're doing, this is called mirror therapy. And the, the premise behind this is that it, it will help create um, skill mobility. It actually helps decrease pain possibly decrease neglect, and some sensory impairments. So this is Dave. This is one of my clients. Um, he is doing um, both hand, upper extremity, and lower extremity. He's basically looking into the mirror. His right hand, which is affected side, is behind the mirror. His, his unaffected side is moving the object in the mirror, and he's watching his hand in the mirror. And what that does is it kind of, the brain perceives the, the right hand meeting the left hand. It's, a, it's an interesting phenomenon. And the first day we had him do this, he was probably 15 minutes into the activity, and we'll do things like 
wash the table, we'll um, stack plates, we'll you know, fold something up, we will, you know, we're, and then we're pressing down on it. So we're trying to get different tactile feedback through his, through his unaffected side. And he was doing this for about 15 minutes, and he stops in the center of it, and he said, wait a minute. And I said, what do you mean, wait a minute? And he goes, there's something happening in my right hand. And I said, what do you mean? And he says, I don't know. My shoulder's tingly. And that's 15 minutes in. I'm, just, I'm getting kind of excited. Of course, I don't want to show too much excitement because we're just starting working on this stuff. But he started showing some really interesting movement patterns of his elbow and his hand. And he's got a very stiff hand. Um, a little story about Dave here. He is a skier. We got him skiing after about a year of me working with him. I got him set up so he can go skiing. We did all adaptive ski exercises so he could go. Wall sits, and you'll see him do that here pretty soon. Um, but he was skiing, and he came down the hill, was standing at the bottom of the hill, and fell. Not skiing. He fell standing still and broke his wrist. Sadly, it was his affected side, and, and so he came to us, and of course, I was clapping when he came in, because I said, well, at least you broke your arm doing something you enjoyed. <laughs> so, so, um, but he's real stiff, but we started seeing some mobility of a, of a wrist that actually had not been um, set quite right in the cast, and he's getting some mobility. And again, here's his feet. We're doing both legs. Um, this was something we wanted to try, because we've got lower extremity to work on and upper extremity, so we wanted to try it with the legs. So this is another client, this is Don. He has been doing the mirror therapy as well. Um, and then once we get through the mirror therapy thing, we really try to push the utilization of their affected hand. So in Don's case, he's, been, he's still doing the mirror therapy, still doing it, so we're kind of doing what we call, I hate to use the word, forced use. But I'm forcing him to use his affected hand. So this is Don. If you notice his tremor, so this is the beginning of his exercise. And he did this for about maybe 20 minutes after doing the therapy of the mirror therapy. And now watch. No tremor. So does mirror therapy work? Does forced use work? Yes. I'm real proud of Don. He also has started skiing. So we've got him up skiing now, too. OK, and this is Rudy. Um, Rudy is a fairly, fairly um, involved right side effect. And I wanted him to practice some of the finer motor skills because he's pretty good with his left hand because he writes with it and everything. But he had so much problem with this, just using his left hand. Again, his right hand's behind the mirror. You can kind of see how he's having difficulty doing that. But after a couple days, he came back and was practicing. He came in to me the next day and did it again. And then the third day, he came in and did this again. No problem. He just did it automatically, just went right, right into it. So even using his unaffected side, looking in the mirror, and I challenge you guys to go home and stand beside a mirror Look in the mirror, don't look at your other hand, and don't look at this hand, and look at, try to see if you can do that. It's actually quite interesting to go backwards and forwards. So once we've done all of the mirror imaging, and we do these, the forced use, one of the things that, we, that a lot of um, stroke survivors have when they walk, they curl their toes, or they internally rotate their legs, or their knees are stiff, or they lock, they come down into a lock position for stabilization when they stand, during the stance phase of their walk. So this is Don, we've, again, we've been doing the, the leg in the mirror, we've been doing weight bearing, and so on this particular day, um, we decided we gotta stop curling his toes, because it hurts. Try walking sometime with your toes curled up in your shoes, it hurts. So we spent about three weeks of me curling on the floor with him, holding his toes up so he would stop curling those toes when he planted his foot. And we did this over and over and over, and he was finally practicing at home, and I got his wife to help us out, and this is the result of what happened. Now watch him go backwards. Watch him bend his toe. There you go. So 
So again, we got the body mobile. Okay, we're working with the brain through, through the mirror therapy. We do the tactile movement, and then they practice, and this is one of the results we get. So there's additional research out there that talks about just visualization. The mirror therapy is part of that visualization thing. It's that imagery. But then we start talking about doing visualization and the power of the brain. And we've heard that all morning about the power of the brain and how it can do so much over the body. And again, I don't understand all the stuff that goes on up here. But we started doing some visualization. And the way we start this is they either lay on the mat table or sit in a chair. It depends on what activity you're trying to get them to do. And we think of, have them think about a task that they want to do, raise their arms, reach for a cup, whatever it is in their brain that they want it. So we have them quietly sit still, and they visualize that affected side reaching for or grabbing or whatever it is in their brain. They just think about it, and they just visualize it happening. Just visualize it. Then we come back and we say, now we want you to visualize this, but then we want you to try to move that affected side. Just try it. And most of the time, you know what? It doesn't move. And that's okay, because I want them to feel that connection, like Heidi was having us do today, close your eyes. What do you feel? Do you feel the air around you? We're trying to get them to, to feel what's going on. And then the last step we do is we still keep their eyes closed. Then we take them through the range of motion physically. I actually physically move them through that range of motion that they're trying to create. So this last one here, this is Rudy. Um, he was the one with doing the little hand thing. And about six months ago, we started doing this exercise. Again, it's visualization. I'm abducting his arm, and I'm asking him to close his eyes and pretend to bring, you know, have him bring his arm in. So about, I don't know, 15 minutes after we did this, I came back to this again, and he started doing about 75% of the movement with his arm without my help. And that was the day I cried, because I could not believe after five years post-stroke He's moving his arm. And he has never had any movement prior to this of that affected side. So does it work? Yes. Is the science that we're learning today work? Yes. I wish we had more. So this is Rudy, and he's done a phenomenal job. He's my poster child. So now that we've got the brain connected to the visualization, we're doing the mirror therapy. Um, one of my clients um, ca called me up, and he has what we call a receptive aphasia. And receptive aphasia is where he, you can talk to him, and it's kind of like Charlie Brown, the wah, 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 wah with the teacher. He can't understand the words we're saying. But he called me up and said, I'm reading a book, and I'm talking to my body. And I said, well, what do you mean you're talking to your body? He says, I want you guys to start doing this. I said, all right, we'll start doing this. So we actually are encouraging our clients to talk to or think to the extremity. Again, it's that visualization, kind of brain, mind over the body thing. And what he told me was he started doing that, and he woke up one morning, and his, what he calls synced up. His shoulder didn't sync up. Um, and he was kind of laughing, and he said, it just didn't sync up. So I decided to go back to sleep and tell my body to do its job. And I, when I woke up, my, my shoulder was hooked up, and my toes and my fingers on my left side were moving. And again, these guys don't move. Now, can it be just a, an accident? I don't believe so. I don't believe it. Because I've seen Gary, which you'll meet here in a little bit, I've seen him go from not walking, being in a wheelchair, to walking with just a single point cane. So I believe it does work. OK, so then we start adding in the physical piece of this. Now we have to go into the physical portion. So this is Tony, um, and we're doing sit to stand exercises because that's, we all stand up and sit down and stand up and sit down. And nine times out of 10, he will lean on his right side to get up. Well, that's going to destroy his knee one day. So we're working very hard. And you can see my hand is really hard on his foot, pushing to give him that tactile feedback. So we do the mirror therapy, we do the visualization, and then we're going to do that tactile feedback and work. And here's Tony again. Um, we're teaching him to kneel because he, A, wants to get on the floor so he can be with his cats. And I'm thinking, okay, you've got to get off the floor. So we practice kneeling at this level before I put him on the floor. Um, and he, trust me, when we did this exercise, he was scared spitless. He was so nervous. He, was, he toned up and his leg went straight and it was like, all right, you've got to relax. So we played the visualization thing and I said, I want you just to close your eyes, pretend you're bringing your foot up, bring it up. And we repeated that until he could actually get it up. And we got him kneeling. 
Once we got him kneeling, he thought he was done. I said, oh no, we're gonna work on your core strength. So again, here comes the strengthening piece, the, car, the, the piece of it that goes along with that physical exercise. So we're doing a reaching exercise which requires balance and core strength. And he's done a phenomenal job with this. This was after about three times of doing this, and this is where we ended up. So now we put it all into that physical strength and endurance and everything. This is Dave. I told you we were doing sit, sit, ski, sit uh, wall sits, and this is his ski exercise. So this is the beginning of his ski exercise. He's not quite ready to go on to the further. He, He's been not exercising like he should, but we're getting him up on his toes. So he actually has a right side effect in that. And this is Rudy again. She met with the hands. So this is about two and a half weeks ago. And if you watch his right hand, he's gripping on his own. And he's pulling down using his lats. And when I met Rudy three years ago, um, Rudy was in a wheelchair. Actually, this has been five years. He was in a wheelchair. I saw his potential and said, you're not staying in a wheelchair. So about three months later, I got him up, started standing him, and we got him walking on a hemi walker. So now he walks with a walker. So additionally then, we add in the cardiovascular exercise, and all these guys do some kind of cardio every single time they come in. We monitor using heart rate monitors, and we maintain a safe heart rate um, based on the cardiac uh, therapy protocol. So this is my guys all working out. And along with all the things we're doing, we're doing the brain, we're doing the mirror exercises, we're doing the, the visualization, we're doing the, the mobilization, all these things all together, they're getting endurance, cardiovascular health, strength, and stamina, which is huge for these guys. So when you take all of those things and you combine all of those things, the mobilization, the brain connect to the body, then we exercise, and all of those things together, these are the results that we're getting. And I'm so proud of my clients. I, I can't tell you enough how hard they work. So this is Tony's paintings. He started painting about two and a half years ago, and these are some of his oils that he's been painting. This is Gary that I was saying was, t was talking to you about um, talking to his left arm to tell it to move. And if you'll notice his right hand, or sorry, his left hand, it's actually on the bike. I don't know if you can see it. He's got his mitten on. But this is him in the Grand Tetons, riding his bike. And just in the, about a month and a half ago, we took the clients rafting. Now, if they weren't mobile, if they didn't have that brain-body connection, and if they weren't physically fit, we couldn't have done this. But they were all willing to get in those rafts and head down the Colorado River with us. And this is Rudy. Um, the first one is about a year ago. Say flamingo. 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 Fla. La. La. Mingo. Put together. La. Mingo. Got it. <laughs> okay, and this is him Morning. about six months later. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Fine. So he has, he has gone from speaking single words to sentences with inflection. I don't know if you notice his voice, and I'm fine, thank you. So, and this is Don, remember I told you I had some clients who were driving um, and skiing, this is Don. And look at him getting in this He-Man truck. <laughs> and there he goes. And this is one of my other clients, which I haven't introduced, and this is Diane and her husband. They hadn't danced in five years. So now Dan, she's dancing. And this is just one more proof of the science that we're doing. It does work out here in the physical world. It happens in here, but it happens out here. So I'd like to leave you with this. Um, we can't stop. Please, don't stop the science. Get more funding. Let's work with the legislation. Let's get more funding to learn more about the brain so we can help these guys. There is really true recovery for stroke survivors. It's there. However, just doing mobilizations and just doing the combination of the brain-body working 
and the physical exercise is not quite enough. These guys have to have consistent work, hard work, as a matter of fact, very hard work. They have to be able to um, have the science behind what we're doing for them so they feel like they are getting somewhere. And they have to have motivation, and that's our job is to motivate them. And based on that and all of that, all that combined, I know and I truly believe that stroke survivors can recover and they do truly have a substantiated reason to hope. Thank you.